So you might know that I am mildly fascinated by all things telegraph. I made a telegraph lamp board, which is like a tele typewriter that you can plug into your synthesizer, complete with a real bell, of course. And I collected enough vintage teletype tape to go up and down Big Ben about five times. Made my own handheld punch system and a tape data reader that you can play music from. And I did a whole video on telegraph code breaking with the Colossus computer, even going so far as to make my own musical cipher machine. But last week, at about one in the morning, I got an alert on my phone that said, Telex machine. And after vastly underestimating how far I'd have to drive, I arrived at Mike's house, the loveliest guy I've ever met. And needless to say, we got on quite well and I stayed for three hours and he showed me the incredible telephone exchange that he'd built. Send the VF signals over and ring the phone at the other end. Those big cable looms make me feel uh, intimidated. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that one. It's one up there. Oh, it's one of the nice, the nice little ones. Thank you, Mike. I'm sorry I didn't get better footage. I was just too overawed with everything. Well, now I'm back in my leaky garage with this, a Creed 7B teleprinter from 1957. It used to belong to the GPO, that's the General Post Office, who ran the combined telephone and postal service here in the UK before 1969. If you walk down the street, you'll still see GPO written on old telegraph cable junction covers on the pavement. So before you had email or fax machines, this was how you sent written messages over your telephone landline or broadcast on the radio. You'll all know your ancient Greek, of course, and tele means at a distance. Graph means to write. So this machine writes at a distance. Similarly, phone means sound. And I think you all know what a television does. It's basically an automatic typewriter, complete with its silence cover, which I don't believe for a second. It receives and sends messages to another teleprinter at the other end of the line by a series of impulses, and that code selects the characters that it prints. And that code in its parallel form looks like this. The little holes, they're the feed holes. That's what engages with a sprocket to pull it through the machine. But the bigger holes, they are the data holes. Each line across of five data holes is a code for a character. And with five holes or spaces, you can only make 32 unique codes, but you've got these clever letter and figure shift keys. So when the machine's in letter shift, it prints the letters. But when it's in figure shift, the same code will print the numbers, symbols, or punctuation written above the letters on the keys here. That's where the shift keys on your laptop keyboard came from. And I do make some nice Bordeaux code blank panels for your Eurorack synth if you're interested. So this tape is how you would store messages and data before you had floppy disks, by literally punching holes in it. Today, we'd call those bits. And I said data because these machines were not only used for transmitting written messages, but also for controlling or programming early computers, like the Witch computer that we talked about in my Decatron video. So this is just the first in a series of videos, restoring this teletype, getting it running again, and talking a bit about the history of how they used to be used. I think I've got a fair bit to learn, but it's gonna be quite fun. Thank you. 